Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobian History. Today we'll be having a look at another medieval profession, which is prostitution. As usual, we'll also have a look at the profession throughout different ages, not just the medieval times. So to summarize what I'll cover in this video, I'll go over prostitution in the ancient societies such as ancient Rome, then I'll talk about the medieval times and also about the church's involvement in prostitution. Then we'll talk about the meaning behind the red light, which is often associated with prostitution. And then to finish off, I'll go over prostitution in different cultures as well. I will also have a separate video about courtesans, which are kind of like prostitutes, but more for the higher classes. And they generally only appeared after the medieval period, during the early Renaissance. Just before we get into the video, I just want to mention that because of the topic of this video, I suspect that YouTube might demonetize or age restrict it. So I just want to quickly shout out my Patreon page and all the patrons who support me on there. If you want to support me on Patreon, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below and it will also be on screen at the end of the video. From the lowest tier, the $1 tier, you'll be able to get access to my Patreon feed as well as all my Patreon exclusive videos. And with higher tiers, you'll also get added benefits such as your name being on screen at the end of the video, as well as access to vote in polls which decide which topics I will make videos about next. Prostitution is often described as one of the oldest professions in the world. It can be traced back to the earliest of civilizations and throughout different cultures all over the world as well. As early as the 18th century BC, ancient Mesopotamia recognized the needs to protect women's property and rights, noted down in the Code of Hammurabi, which was created in 1754 BC. This code addresses inheritance rights of women, and in this section it also already mentions female prostitutes. In ancient Greece, the use of sacred prostitutes is cited by Herodotus. Sacred prostitutes were used during religious worship, such as fertility rites. In ancient Greece, prostitutes were required to wear distinctive dresses, had to pay taxes as well, and they were able to be independent women. In ancient Rome, prostitution was legal, regulated and widespread, with registered prostitutes being called by the name Meritrix, whereas unregistered ones were called prostibulae. Although men and women might engage in both male or female prostitutes, evidence for female prostitution is far more common. As the Roman Empire grew, captured slaves were often used and sold as prostitutes. Enslavement into prostitution was also used as a legal punishment against free women who had committed crime. Sex slaves were usually bought by the wealthy, whereas sex workers were men and women who were either self-employed or employed by what we'd consider a pimp or a madam. If the prostitutes worked out of a brothel, they would rarely leave that brothel to find clients, and each prostitute was given their own small room in the brothel. Sex workers would generally have lower class patrons, whereas the wealthy upper class could just buy sex slaves instead. Although there are exceptions to this, some professional prostitutes could be compared more to courtesans, cultivating an elite clientele. These Roman courtesans could become very wealthy and influential, for example, in the time of Cicero, the courtesan Cytheris was a welcome guest for dinner parties at the highest level of Roman society. Medieval authorities created legislation to deal with prostitution, however they rarely attempted to define what exactly a prostitute was, because it was often deemed unnecessary to specify exactly who fell into that specific category. But in the 14th century, Fasciculus Morum, a Latin handbook for preachers which discussed the seven deadly sins and their opposing seven virtues, states that the term prostitute must be applied only to those women who give themselves to anyone and will refuse no one, and that for monetary gain. 
Women who became prostitutes often did not have a family or means to protect themselves and it has been recorded that mothers would prostitute their own daughters in exchange for some extra money. It was commonly accepted that prostitution was a part of medieval life. The thought behind it was that the use of prostitutes made the men less likely to rape young women. This allowed these would-be victims to keep their virtue and remain marriageable. This is displayed in a quote from Saint Augustine, which states, The removal of the institution would bring lust into all aspects of the world. Prostitution often grew out of urban environments. Cities tended to draw more prostitutes due to the sheer size of the population and this higher demand of their services allowed brothels and the general institutionalization of prostitution to be profitable. During the 13th century there was a global trend towards positive policies on prostitution as laws that exiled these women changed towards the sumptuary laws. Sumptuary laws were laws that restricted the use of fabrics or types of clothing to specific classes of society. The general purpose of these laws was to restrain luxury and extravagance. Sumptuary laws covered the majority of classes in the Middle Ages, so it's no surprise that prostitutes also had a certain dress code they had to comply with. Such as in England, a striped hood was introduced for these women to wear. In 14th century London, prostitutes wore yellow hoods as their calling card. And in Marseille, they wore a striped cloak. Later, this was changed to bands of fabric which were attached to the arm or shoulder. These, for example, could be a shoulder knot of a particular color, which was used as a badge of their profession. The church's stance on prostitution was threefold acceptance of prostitution as an inevitable social fact, condemnation of those profiting from this commerce, and encouragement for the prostitutes to repent. In the 14th century, the church recognized its inability to remove prostitution from society, and therefore began to tolerate prostitution as a lesser evil, as it was believed that prostitution would prevent rape, sodomy and masturbation, which were even worse than prostitution. Despite the church's stance on prostitution, popes and other religious communities made various attempts to remove and reform prostitutes. One of the reasons that prostitutes were looked down upon by the church was that they were seen as unclean women, who often committed adultery, which is against one of the Ten Commandments. The church used Mary Magdalene's biblical history of being a reformed harlot to encourage prostitutes to repent and mend their ways. Medieval Christian authors often discouraged prostitution, but did not consider it a serious offense, and under some circumstances even considered marrying a harlot to be an act of piety, as a man who married one would be able to provide for her, and thus getting her out of the sinful business of prostitution. Every woman was considered to contain a latent meritrix, so that it was possible to both rise out and fall into the category, as we can see with tales of prostitutes repenting their sins and some even becoming saints. Just to clarify, in the medieval period, a meritrix was understood as a woman who turned no one away, so pretty much the same definition as a prostitute would have, with the difference being that it was the promiscuousness that defined a meritrix, and not necessarily monetary gain as it is with defining a prostitute. By the late 14th century, sex work in London was tolerated as long as it was restricted to two areas. Cox Lane, which is nowadays known as Cock Lane in Smithfield, which is within the city walls of London, and the other being Studdock, which is a district outside of the London walls and on the other side of the Thames. And it was within the jurisdiction of the Bishop of Winchester, 
and it was said that the Bishop of Winchester even owned some of the brothels to make profit. It was Henry VIII who finally put an end to the bishop's involvement in the sex trade, when in 1546 he ordered the closure of the Suddock brothels. Of course this didn't abolish the sex trade in London, which just moved to different areas of the city. And this practice of restricting prostitution to certain areas of the city was something that was done in lots of cities. These later also became known as the red light district because of the red lamps that would be hung outside of brothels or prostitutes houses. These red lights or red lanterns don't appear until after the middle ages however. It is thought that this term stems from 17th century Amsterdam. These prostitutes usually didn't have access to running or clean water, so they generally had bad hygiene. At night, when the visibility was low, they used this red light to camouflage boils or any other imperfections in their skin. And this way they could lure in the foreign sailors which frequented the city. The carrying around of the red lantern later evolved into a red lantern being hung outside of a brothel. And because prostitution was usually restricted to certain areas of the city, these became known as the red light districts. Towards the end of the 15th century, attitudes towards prostitution began to change. This was around the same time as the first syphilis outbreak in Europe, which occurred in Naples in 1494, and later swept across the rest of Europe as well. During the early 16th century, prostitution was often associated with plague and disease, which can be seen as one of the causes for brothels and prostitution itself to be outlawed by many authorities as time went on. Around this time you also had the Christian Reformations, which introduced many changes to the religious and political ideas of the time, which also had an effect on prostitution. This could be seen in southern Germany, where many towns closed their brothels in the hopes of eradicating prostitution. Now I'll briefly go over some different cultures. In Japan, the geisha's traditional role was to professionally entertain guests and although sex was incidental, it was not officially part of the job. Geishas were often confused with Japanese oirans, who were high-ranking courtesans. The confusion probably stems from their similar appearance to geishas. In India, nobility were often catered for by a wave particularly during the Mughal Empire, which lasted between the 16th and the 19th century. These women would dance, recite poetry, sing and entertain. It is said that the dance style of a Tawaif is still seen in modern Indian cinema. These women would often be taken at a young age and then trained in music, literature and dance. They would also attract wealthy and powerful clients similar to courtesans. In the Islamic world, Muhammad declared prostitution forbidden in the 7th century. And within Islam, prostitution is considered a sin. However, sexual slavery was not considered as prostitution and was widespread in the Arab world. Most of the sex slaves would be from Africa, Central Asia and Europe, and after they were captured, the women and girls would become concubines in the harems. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. As I've said in the beginning of the video, if you want to support me on Patreon, there will be a link on screen right now. On screen now as well will be a link to the courtesan video, which is kind of an extension to this one. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and especially my $15 patrons, Parker Dye and G. David.